Keto, paleo, animal-based diets all really sound really exciting and enticing, but are they really right for you? Let's talk about the pros and the cons of keto, paleo, and animal-based diets. I'm Mike, I'm a fat guy who's trying to not be fat anymore by making lifestyle changes. In this video, we're gonna be talking about not one, not two, not three, well, probably three, or maybe we'll get into the fourth one, popular diets that have some benefit and really some disadvantages that we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of each of them. Number one, first up, we have the ketogenic diet, commonly known as keto. It's low carb, high fat, and has gained immense popularity. I think really because of any diet that tells people they can just have a massive amount of bacon is gonna be popular. The keto diet emphasizes a significant reduction in carbohydrates and an increased intake in healthy fats. And so it has been shown to promote promising weight loss, I would say short term, by improving insulin sensitivity and increasing mental clarity. And now getting into some of the research, a study published in the British Journal of Nutrition in 2013 found that the ketogenic diet can lead to greater weight loss compared to a low fat diet alternative. And again, in the short term is what the study found. Keyword, short term. Next on the list, we have the paleo diet. This diet focuses on consuming foods similar to those available to our ancestors in the Paleolithic era. The paleo diet emphasizes whole unprocessed foods and it excludes grains, legumes, and dairy products. It has been associated with an improved nutrient intake and reduced inflammation, and again, potential weight loss. And the scientific evidence we have for this comes from the Journal of Nutrients. In 2015, they found that the paleo diet can lead to an improvement in nutrient intake, particularly in vitamins and minerals, so your micronutrients. Lastly, let's talk about the animal-based diet. This approach primarily focuses on eating animal products while minimizing or completely eliminating plant-based foods. So again, think of this diet as emphasizing foods like meat, fish, eggs, dairy is okay, but really we're eliminating or removing carbohydrates and plant-based foods. So it provides ample protein, which is great, and it can be appealing for those who are seeking weight loss and muscle gain. It's also great for those who hate vegetables. This guy. So talking about those three diets, we've gone over some of those pros, but really do they outweigh the cons that come with each of them? So one of the main challenges, you know, starting off with the ketogenic diet, one of the main challenges is its strict restriction of carbohydrates. This restriction on carbs can make it really difficult to maintain over time, which leads to feeling of deprivation and potential nutrient deficiencies. It also makes it really challenging if you're trying to, you know, improve your physical fitness in the gym or really you're an athlete. Limiting your carbs is really a challenge. And so obviously keto is more focused on people who are doing fat loss. There's a lot of people who claim as benefits for overall health and, you know, wellness when it comes to being a better athlete. But really over a long term, a ketogenic diet is really a challenge because of its limiting carbs. And specifically the studies that we have against the ketogenic diet come from the journal Frontiers in Nutrition by Gibson. This 2017 study was a long term study that looked at the sustainability of ketogenic diet and its concern due to again, its restrictive nature and potential negative effects on overall dietary quality. So again, that's kind of my thing against keto and I have talked bad about keto in the past and I will say keto I think is right for some people who are really looking for you know that fix but the problem with keto and it's become so popular is I think people take all the good things from keto and then kind of ignore the very noticeable bad overall I just don't think keto is sustainable long term at least it definitely wasn't for me so next up we have the paleo diet which again excludes grains legumes and dairy products which can limit nutrient variety and potentially lead to deficiencies if not carefully planned. And when looking at, again, the data that we have on the paleo diet, we have a study that was published in the Journal of Nutrients in 2017, which highlighted that paleo diet may be challenging to follow in the long term and could lead to inadequate intakes of certain nutrients like calcium and vitamin D. And again, we go back to same issue that we had with keto is the paleo diet just does not seem sustainable over a long period, long horizon. So if you've got a lot of weight to lose, Paleo diet might get you excited, but you're probably not going to stick to it after a few months. And then next up, the last one of the third that we're reviewing in this video is the animal based diet. So really, we're relying on again, animal products and limiting carbohydrates, which again, can raise questions about overall sustainability and potential health risks. And the research we have on this one comes through the 
Journal of the American College of Cardiology in 2017, they, their study suggests that a diet high in animal products and low in plant-based foods may increase the risk of heart disease and other chronic conditions, which makes sense, right? You know, doctors are really pro eat your vegetables and all that sort of stuff. But again, this diet, as most restrictive diets are, makes it hard to stick to over a long term period. So when it comes to weight loss, these diets really get a lot of traction, I think, because they seem so exciting. And because of that, you know, they do show that they're effective in a short term. So like I said, they're exciting, effective in a short term, that means they get a big following. But however, for long term, you know, weight loss, and really, we want sustainability to be key here, it's important to focus on a well rounded diet that really has an approach that will maintain this weight loss in the future and not just have all this weight come back as soon as you get off that diet. And again, like I said, the big problem with these diets is they are typically restrictive in nature, whether you know, they're restricting some, you know, item that could vary from diet to diet, but rather than prioritizing more of the good stuff, stuff, you know, more protein, more whole foods, they're just trying to remove things, which I think is better to put in better good stuff rather than remove some bad stuff. So striking a balance and trying to incorporate a variety of nutrient dense foods is really important on a weight loss journey. It's been what I've got a lot of my success from. So I encourage you guys before you start to try any of these diets to really evaluate yourself. And if this is something that you can do for a long term, a really long period, make sure it's sustainable for you. And if really you're into it and you're listening to your body and you realize it's not sustainable for you, don't feel like you're a failure because you're going to stop doing this diet. Just try to, again, focus on improvements and eating a whole food nutrient dense diet and you know obviously trying to improve your physical activity and accountability all that stuff is really key but don't feel like a failure if you started one of these diets and then got off the bandwagon what's more important is to make sure that you're in a calorie deficit if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating whole nutrient dense foods